Hello, this is Bishop, and this is a test of the new Tesla firmware version 2017-34-2448-CFC. So this is just a continuation of the same test series that we've been doing with every new version of Autopilot. We're doing it on the same stretch of road, roughly the same-ish time of day, at least in terms of visibility, um, entering the turn at 30 miles an hour, and we'll see how it does. This is the same turn that on the previous version um, didn't actually perform so well. The car started to steer too much into the center lane, whereas it did not do that in previous versions, so at least not the not since they added the new um, uh, longitudinal control. So now we're entering the turn at 30 miles an hour. We're going to see how the autopilot does. Uh, slowing down to about 22, cutting into the center lane, although not as badly. It actually corrected itself, which the uh, previous version was not doing so well in all my previous testing. Cutting into the bike lane a little bit and not quite slowing down as badly. Uh, it is coming up with the hold steering wheel prompt because it is detecting a curvy section of road, so that's normal and as to be expected. Um, so far, based on that test, I would say slight improvement over the previous version. Maybe not as good as the one just before it, but it seems to be at least coming back around. So we're just going to sit here at this intersection. We'll go ahead and make a right turn and do our loop real quick. And then we'll see how that goes. While we are doing that, we'll also be on the lookout for things like speed limit sign detection, which based on what I'm seeing on the instrument panel right now does not appear to be the case yet. Uh, and then we'll also see how it does with cars in adjacent lanes and a few other minor undocumented features that we don't uh, typically see in the release notes. So, so far, uh, haven't had an opportunity to see adjacent lanes. Let's see what happens when we catch up with these cars real quick. Oh. No, doing okay. Ran over a manhole cover there for a moment and started to swerve a little bit to the right. Seems like it's doing an okay job staying centered in the lane. Uh, it's making me a little nervous, actually. Okay. So it was a little wobbly on that particular section of the road. Uh, on the bridge that we were just crossing, good slow down ahead of the car. On the bridge that we were just crossing, there was a center lane, but there was no right lane, so it was relying on the ultrasonic or right side um, lane line. So it was relying on the ultrasonic in order to detect the lane. It was having a little bit of trouble keeping center on that section. So let's go ahead and make right here. We'll get into our regular lane. Wait for this car to go by. All right, and I've turned it on, and we'll see how it deals with this section. So it's following the right lane line, centering the lane. All right, did a good job from the two lanes that funneled down into one lane. Have it set at 40 miles an hour, which is actually the speed limit in spite of what the uh, GPS is reading. We just passed a speed limit sign that says 40. It did flip over the second we passed the speed limit sign, but that's been sort of par for the course ever since they switch over to the new GPS data. The unfortunate thing that I've gotten as a result of that that I've mentioned in previous videos is that the speed limits the, um, information that we have as part of the GPS information is not as accurate. It does tend to be more accurate as to exactly where the signs are, which is weird. Um, but it is not accurate in terms of what the actual speed limits for a lot of the roads around here are, particularly the highways. It's way okay. Did not successfully negotiate that and try to go into the center lane, so I had to take over right there. So let's re-engage and see how it goes. Hopefully the drivers around me aren't watching me thinking that I'm going crazy. Okay. Wanted to take the turn lane for a second there, but it decided against it. Thought about it again. <laughs> really wants to think about taking those turn lanes. Alright, so this section's alright, but for some of these sort of irregular areas, it does not seem to be necessarily be doing a great job. Um, I'd say it's no worse than the previous version that I had, um, which I'll put in the comments because I don't have these version numbers memorized. A little bit too long and complicated and alphanumeric these days for me to rattle them off off the top of my head. I typically have to read them off the screen and I don't have it in front of me. But I would say that it is not as good as the first version of the new logarithmic control that I had originally gotten. Um, it does feel like it's still a little bit of a step backwards, but it does feel like they've at least improved it over the last version. And I also noticed that I got this version pretty quickly. The last version I think I got only two weeks ago, and before I got the update for this one. I got 
Berkeley and Lens. Sorry, my camera rig obscures the instrument panel, so I can't clearly see when the autopilot indicator comes on. See if it... Nope, coming up in that car a little fast, so I went ahead and took over. We'll go ahead and make a right here. I'll get it up to the speed limit, turn on tack. And as soon as it's available, come on, pick it up. All right, so we can get autopilot at five miles per hour over speed limit. All right, I'm doing a pretty good job of lane keeping here. Uh, on the previous version that I was using, it did tend to turn a little bit too much into the center lane on left turns. It does not appear to be doing that on this version, at least not on this stretch of road. It did do that on the stretch we just tested on. So I'll hang my normal right. Get it up to, we'll say 30, and then engage autopilot and see how it does on the rest of the stretch of road. So far, so good. It's not too swervy back and forth between the lane lines. It seems like it's doing a pretty good job of keeping centered. It's not freaking out once the lane lines disappear for the intersections, which is an occasional problem on some of the versions that I've seen in the past. And it's slowing down. Yeah, over, it's, it's still steering into the center lane a little bit too much on some of these local road curves. So we're gonna have to do another test on highway and see how that does. But for local road, I'd say it still has a little ways to go. But thanks for watching.